boom, the boom, 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 boom. All right, the stream is up. The game is up. The gig is up. I've got my hands up. And I don't know what I'm doing. Ooh, buttons. Look at that, fancy buttons. Okay, on the count of three. Okay, one. Ah, geez. Hello everybody, welcome to the stream. Today is the 28th of March 2022. My name is Biondo and I hope you have enjoyed your past week and you will enjoy the week coming up. Why? Because uh, I'm going to play a bad game. It's, it's, uh, I don't know. I don't really know <laughs> how to describe it. So why don't I just dive right into it? Um, so yeah, let's, let's get into it. Wow. So, um, oh, and some audio. You probably, you probably want the audio as well while you're at it. So, um, yeah, so let me give you a very, very, very brief story of this game. Um, I had owned a couple of games as a kid. I'm going to, I'm going to say this story. I had owned five PS1 games as a kid, specifically. I'd owned a few more, but I picked five to go with me on a trip. Uh, my parents went to a trip. We went to somewhere in Queensland, I think. And at some point in time, our hotel room had been raided and various valuables were stolen. These, this game was one of five games in that room along with the PlayStation 1. And this would have been 2002 at least because this game is a late PS1 game. It did not come out until 2002 in uh, Australia regions. Also, don't Google A to M because I got asked to mouth as a, as a as a thing, and that's the last thing you want right before your game. Also, you're gonna enjoy watching this on YouTube. We'll see. We'll see what's going on there. Um, but yeah, no, they they raided the room, and of the various possessions they stole, they took um, the PlayStation um, and five discs. They were, were just in a CD case. Um, and, uh, that was about it. Didn't really get much from the hotel security. Didn't, didn't get anything, uh, insurance happened. But anyway, uh, two of the games were Spyro 1 and 2. I managed to grab, uh, some pre-owned eBay copies, um, at the time. Uh, so now I have two cases of Spyro 1 and 2. I never did buy Spyro 3. Uh, but, uh, I guess I, I might as well describe the... The other two were Lego Races and Vanishing Point. And this was number five in that list. Uh, by the way, note how this game starts off with a trailer? Like a teaser trailer? Unless you can't see it on YouTube. But it actually starts off with a teaser trailer, including this coming to theaters November 2nd, 2001. This game, I'm not even joking, came out two days before that, or three days before that. And it, where's the logo? It's just that, it's just this, press start, you're going, and it, it's just titled Monsters, Inc. In-game. It's just Monsters, Inc. Now, if you live in America, this game is referred to as Monsters, Inc. Screen Team for the PS1. Uh, if you're not in America and you're in the PAL regions, it's Monsters, Inc. Scare Island. I don't know why, there's two different names. I don't know, man. We can go into the options. Uh, since it's a game that came out in 2001... This game also has a PS2 version, but I'm going to be playing authentic because this game is a PS1 game through and throughout. It does not really look like a PS2 game, but we'll see. So basically this game, that's my story. It's not much of a story, but it's a story. I'd like to show you how jank this cutscene is, as well as how wonderful our voice actors are. If we get through this, you and I can be the best screen producing team Monstropolis has ever seen. I can't believe we were handpicked by Waternoose himself to train at the Monsters Incorporated private facility. I can't do this. I'm too nervous. And you building up the situation like this is not helping. Relax, Mikey. Remember what happened on our first day of college. Please, don't remind me. Yeah, okay. But I don't want to deal with another mess like that. It took him a whole semester to rebuild the dorm. Didn't I say not to remind me? Okay, you're right. It's no big deal. It's only one of the most respected companies in all of Monstropolis. No problem. 
Not like we're on the verge of a screen shortage or anything. We'll be fine. It's a two-part cutscene. Well, I don't remember seeing. Oh no, we're not on the list. We are not on the list, Sully. How can this be? We filled out all the paperwork. Granted, it was extremely confusing, but come on. Oh boy, what am I gonna tell my mother? She'll be absolutely devastated. Oh, here we go. Sullivan, James P. And Mike Wazowski. You too have been enlisted in this training course because of your potential to become a top tier producing team. So these fingers are, are like here, paper thin. You will work together to complete a total of 15 trials. That's right, 15 trials. If you can complete them all successfully, you will earn yourself a spot on the staff. Okay? Good. Please proceed to the elevator directly behind the help desk. Any questions, come see me. Welcome. I, I don't know what's with the welcome, but sure. So uh, that's, by the way, that's it. That's your intro. And now you're presented with this. Obviously, how big Sully is relative to Mike. Like, I think that's even more than it should be in the film. But uh, I'm going to go with Mike just to illustrate the hilarity. Both characters are exactly the same. There's no difference between them. Uh... This game is basically a very, very simple collectathon. It's also one that's gonna irritate me. Here you will learn all you need to know to become a top scare mm -hmm. at Monsters Incorporated. Mm -hmm. We will begin with the basics. Jumping. At least they scroll to the next bit of text and they show you what's going on. And you can even like kind of dash past this tutorial text and even leave the tutorial if you really wanted to. It just the animation stops so okay uh it's a run and jump game also i would like to highly know i've got my i've got the overlay back back from whatever last stream because i really wanted to highlight like as much as like you know it's a bit more obvious what i'm doing in this game i want to show how delayed that jump is someone do the math on that one like if this game is running at 30 fps you can see how like oddly delayed like all the input is it's very bizarre uh we'll get into some of the other stuff maybe i should kind of zoom past because watching a tutorial is very very uh i don't know it's, it's it's very straightforward uh so pretty much there's a double jump in this game which is actually kind of nice double jumps in platforms is really really nice which is why they're going to tell you about the grab wow you can grab ledges cool yeah, alright, so, uh, what is this giant pole? I don't know, exactly. I think you can hold this. Yeah, no, I really don't know what that is. It's actually just sticking out in this level, but sure. I thought they'd, like, have an untextured wall somewhere, but nah. So, alright, so, uh, what other games are cool at the time? Well, Crash Bandicoot's cool. We've got cardboard boxes, or wooden boxes, and... You roll when you're walking, but it's a uh, it's a spin attack otherwise. And in fact, it's actually I think pretty much the same as Ali. So, hooray! Breaking boxes. Um, boxes can contain stuff, I guess. I'm trying to think as well. A triangle is that? What is circle? Circle must be the um the contextual button for later on. So how do you heal, by the way? Chips. They gotta tell you, they gotta tell you an extra life, because, uh, I, how would I know? Amazing. How would I know what an extra life is? It's actually, it, I, I guess this is a, a general point I'm just gonna, like, mention. What do you do? Oh my gosh. Jeez, okay, so, uh, metal crates, ground pound. You can do it after a double jump. Mike bounces. It just makes him so much better to play because I'm pretty sure Sully just flat like flat lines <laughs> he just dies um, so okay now yeah this is the um uh, how do I explain it as you collect more primordial ooze the level of your fright meter will increase 
Collect all ten cans of primordial ooze and proceed to the next room. Yeah, that's pr that's pretty much all I can say. So, uh, yeah, it takes ten blips of goop. Maybe it's more for the later levels, um, for the later like just bits. But you basically got to collect the ooze, and it raises your bar. And at some point, then you filled the bottom bit of the bar. And now here they introduce the very bizarre part of the game. There's these robots. So you have to scare the robot. And you can only scare the robot if the, your bar is of the color of a shirt. So you go up to him. And then you mash the button it shows. And then you hit X. That... That is what happens. Amazing. I... Yeah. Also, hi, didn't... Text right there. Um... You're doing really well. So, blah 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 blah. I, I literally just explained it in no time. Red ones, red little cans, fill it a bit faster. Uh, the harder the person is though, the more you gotta fill the bar. It takes longer. This game is going to become button mashing central. And, uh... Amazing. Wow, I sound so disinterested playing it, but it's weird. Like, I, I, I start off with a, with a weird story. So, how do I describe this game? Maybe I never did actually beat this game, or whatever. I can't even recall, like, playing it too much as a kid. But I think I had seen someone play the PS2 version, and I was like, oh, I gotta play that one. There's a lot of games I own where it's just, like, specifically... I had a mate who owned that game, and I was just like, I want that game! Ray. Um, also, there's a hover at the end of the third jump. It's just like, man, a very forgiving jump, but... Sure, so, pick up all the goop. And, uh, now we scare... These people, and... And <laughs> we button mash for a while. So, uh, but, yeah, I, I can't really recall much of playing this game as a kid. Now, I think I relived it, uh, two years ago? It must have been two years ago. I don't believe I played it, like, on, uh, for, as a speedrun, um, for anyone. But, I can safely say this game is, like, it's, it's two streams worth. It is not a very long game, and one that is ultimately a bit disappointing. Like, I call it a bad game. I think it's a, like, very mediocre. I shouldn't necessarily call it bad, but it's like, what it is trying. Remember, this came out in end of 2001. Like, I'm pretty sure Jack and Daxter came out. I'm very certain Gran Turismo 3 was out. That's my, that's my litmus test, apparently. But like, what else came out in 2001? So, uh, by, by the way, you kill three nerves, you get, um, sorry, five nerves, you get the bronze medal. And this is somewhat medal, important, I think. You must collect ten Monsters, Inc. tokens. Collect all ten. I can't even remember. What's the goal to, like, continue levels? Because, uh, uh, you know, as of games of this time, they add a little bit of uh, secondary item backtracking. Um, which I will talk about in a game I played this week. Um... But yeah, so you gotta collect 10 of these tokens, and that gives you a silver medal. That's not bad for a guy with one eye. Amazing. And for, for reference, this is both Mike and Sully are not voice acted by Mike and Sully. I believe the guy who does uh, Sully's voice also does Patch's voice in the Emperor's New Groove game. Um, so yeah, yeah, the, the last medal is those eight scare thingies in a level, and you gotta scare all of them. Uh, this means that they will just litter the level with all these ooze things, and it's just kinda up to you to find them. But there is just enough to get to the, to the red in this level and maybe other levels as well. Um, which is why I'm mildly struggling to find, oh, there you go. You get a life as well. You're gonna see me sitting on a couple of lives. Uh, that's about it. So, but yeah, I, I think I just kind of relived it at some point. Uh, nothing really too big. 
kind of just was like, oh yeah, that's a game. And then I kind of moved on with my life. So I thought, hey, it'd be cool to kind of show it off to all of you. Um, because, I mean, that seems to be all, most of the games I play on this channel. Um, is to basically, like, slightly relive the glory days. I don't know, like, the worst part as well is that, like, uh... You know, hey, here's Blundo getting meta again. Uh, but, like... Like, uh... You know, I, I feel very, like, a, a bizarre attachment to, like, Disney PS1 games because I had played... Toy Story 2 and I'd play The Bug's Life and then at some point when I was 12 I was like I'm gonna play him for YouTube and then I got a lot of views relatively to, <laughs> to stuff now and now it's just like well I mean they weren't the only games I played as a kid this was one that I obviously couldn't play as a kid and thank you to the world of uh, game preservation uh, I did it I did it I can you can not hear Roz and any of the other um, but by the way, yeah, forgot to tell you about the camera controls. Also, don't don't do this before you get the gold. It doesn't even go up all the way, but sure. Excellent work, gentlemen. Now, in order to hone your skills so that you can become top scare producers, we're going to make things a bit more challenging. Oh well, at least we made it this far. Hey! Your first destination is Urban Field. Not to worry now, just follow that path there, and you'll be fine. Remember, at Monsters Incorporated, we recognize that our strongest assets are you, our employees. So, if there's one thing I'll say, this game sets itself up, at least, to be, like, completely incongruent to... Uh, incongruent? Is that the word I'm using? Uh, it's got nothing to do with the plot of the film. Like, actually nothing. And, and they, they're aware of it. So, anyway, uh, urban field, it says urban training ground. So, anyway, let me just back out. Hit select. There's 12 levels. Each one has the exact same structure at the end of each world of four levels. I think you just got to get a bronze in each of the levels. Uh, you'll, uh, you'll get a boss secret slide. I'm, I'm just going to say that. Um, and, uh, that's the game. The game ends at the third one, and that's kind of it. Uh, so anyway, this is the first level. Uh, it introduces a few things, such as getting hit and hitting the mailboxes while you're trying to actually, like, hit these. But they give you chips sometimes, so that's okay. Obviously, some things you can interact with and some things you can't. Uh, there's a kid climbing on the on the bars. Uh, one thing that's also, like... I love, like, what's going on here. Like, you could just scare him. But he's just gonna keep trying to build his sandcastle. I don't know, so let's scare him. And uh, there we go. Oh my gosh. So I'm gonna bail out of this level. I know this level off the top of my head is one that you can't get everything in the first time. Um, and in fact, I can demonstrate this. I'm gonna not walk into that room for a moment, but uh, I can demonstrate this by going down here. Do you like how he gains all this momentum? Here's an item. You will need to unlock the item. Other than that, I don't really know much about this game. Like, actually, off the top of my head. And that's me after playing it. Uh, before, so... We'll see how this goes. Um... But I guess this is a window to the past. A window to a time when... You know, g games were simple, easy to understand, and... Oddly, like, I, I always found something weird happened when games went to, like, the PlayStation or even maybe late SNES. Because these licensed games got very easy. There was a point when, like, you know, the Lion King game and the Aladdin game, they're, they're somewhat tricky games that people know of. This game is definitely on the tail end of, like, the PS1 era. Like, I don't know if they did... Oh, they did do a Lilo and Stitch PS1 game. Now that one, that one is a, you know, a, a masterpiece in its own right. Maybe I'll play that one at some point. I never played that one as a kid, but I did play it uh, purely because someone uh, really wanted me to. And I was like, fine. And that one was a bit of a joy. I think I've actually got like a highlight on my channel. It's just like, whatever that, <laughs> whatever that game was. Um, look at this kid. Let's get him. I am partially on the bars. 
but that's all right. The scariest thing of those moves, I swear. Um, it's not like a horrendous looking PS1 game, but it's definitely one where it's like, mm, yeah, the hardware is like reaching the end of its course. Look at this kid in the trash. Get out of the trash, kid. What even is this? Like, oh, you gotta, you gotta prepare the people to scare the kids, and it's just like... When, when are the kids, like, out in a field in the middle of the daytime or a park? So, scare three kids and the door opens. You're gonna also love the loading times in this game. Uh, because there's quite a number of levels, uh, this one included, maybe? There's a couple of levels, and it's like, they will load... Well, they're split into multiple, like, sections, purely by a loading screen, and it's just like, oh, it's the, it's the worst feeling to have a loading screen, like, mid-level. So, uh... Yeah, I believe that's my fourth kid. How can you tell? Because there's four cans on that screen. So if I do the math off the top of my head, what is that, 8 times 12? 96? 96 cans to get. Uh, I don't believe you have to re-get the cans, but I think you do have to re-get the scream meters. Which is a bit sad. Because there's a number of these levels where... I don't know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see off the top of my head. Also, you're gonna hear that ear piercing the entire time, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. So I got the bronze medal. Hooray! And then it asks you to save the game. So I'm like, cool. Okay. Do I have any save slots just lingering? Or no? I flush them out. Along with my brain. My brain has turned to mush. It has turned to mush. You can save four save files in a, in a slot. Which... Whoop. It just appears. And it pulls the door in. And the level exits. No, it doesn't exit. Oh, that was why I really hated this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one, okay, so like all licensed games at the time, it kicks in with actually parts of the film. The film was, I guess, yeah, you know, it was ready by this point. But it's weird that it starts off with a trailer and not even like a, an intro of some variety, but... Hey, this is the third Disney Pixar video game I've played on, on the channel. What other ones were there? I think by this point, like, that's all the PS1 ones, isn't it? Because you had Toy Story, but that came out a little bit before. Now it's for the SNES. I guess that works as a little micro scene. But, like, note how after the full motion video, you go back into the level, and... Okay, this is the part that really confused me then. All the cans respawn. All of them. It's kind of weird. I assume the multi-stage levels also do this. Where the cans respawn. But it's kind of weird. Because it's just like, what's the, what's the balance on that one? So I guess I can get that one kid just so I never have to go back and get him. Maybe the bar also lasts. Maybe that's what I'm remembering, because I remember, like, you know, something about the level didn't save between, like, entering and exiting it. Um, but I guess that must be it, so... I don't know why I'm running so far, just to get some... some poop. Primordial Ooze, is that what they said? Why Primordial Ooze? Do they mention that by, like, name in the film? Now, yeah... <laughs> I like Monsters, Inc. as a film, but it's just like, I don't remember every single bit of it. All I remember is I'll kidnap a thousand children before I let this company die. I was actually, I was tempted to, to try and find a song about child kidnapping and put it to the stream title. Uh, but you'll be, you'll be pleased to know that's a very, very, very small camp. Uh, so I decided to go with songs about screaming, which is probably alright. Um. <laughs> Whoa. He just went bold for a moment. Also, check this out. What is this? That's right, switches can open doors. There's nothing cross-level, by the way. 
you'll see that. You'll see the, the um, the LOD swapping kick in, and because I don't have the trampoline, I can't go up to it, so. We'll call that a level. And, uh, I don't know, you could probably exit the level to the, in the menu, but I'm going this away. What does it say down there? Two times that? I don't know what that is off the top of my head, so. You just go in. And then back to Scare Island. At least the loading times aren't that long, but it's like, it's a little long. Also, it's really weird how, uh, I guess this game was interlaced. Oh yeah, this is weird as well. So, you can't swim, you take a hit, if you're in the water. Uh, there's a little bit of, like, scenic depth to everything. But there's actually nothing to do out here, like, at all. The only thing that you get presented is you'll see Randall sitting there. Now, he is how you replay the boss levels. Are you ready to challenge me? But also, you can play them right now. You don't have to replay them, which is kind of weird. Also, I guess I just ran about. Here are the three worlds. Three worlds. Four levels each, and I think maybe it's the number of medals that's preventing me to go into one of them. All the bronze medals, that's just it. Okay, you just need bronze in all the levels. So. Alright, so I guess I can enter the second level, downtown. Let's just play as Mike for the entire game because Sully just takes his time. Um, yeah, yeah. But it's a, it's a game. We got remote control cars because obviously monsters come across these. I think you gotta smash it. Yeah, you gotta smash it by doing that. Uh, I love, by the way, that first level. Like, it immediately locks everything behind a, um, an item. I'm curious who did the music on this game. I actually wonder if it is the same... Nah. It's got a little bit of the same vibe, but I don't think it's quite there. Of uh, whoever does the Toy Story 2 music, it doesn't have the um, the sound font, you know. Like it doesn't it doesn't feel like it's the same, you know, production of music. It's like how I found out that Richard Jacques did the um, music to the Guardians of the Galaxy game, and it's like, right, the man, the myth, the legend, he's back. He never left us to begin with. So, see, Mike can just roll. So. And then sometimes spin while I'm while I'm running. So, uh, but yeah, this is a um, this is a game, and and probably a great like podcast form game, where there's not really much going on. You're gonna see me go around. You're gonna see these levels, and you'll go, yeah, that's a game. Um, surprisingly, I look it up as well. I never owned a PS3, but apparently this game, Disney decided to put it up for sale again. Uh, so, you can, legitimately, if you own a PS3, buy this game for seven bucks, so... Was it, is it worth seven bucks? US? Um, maybe. There's a lot of that, there's a lot of like, oh, you gotta, you gotta scare so many dudes in order to open the door. That feels a bit arbitrary, doesn't it? It's like, why exactly? I love the ladder as well, you jump towards it and it's like, do you want to climb up? Like, I don't know, man, do you? Do you? So. Uh, oh, they put health behind here. Or a thingy. I'm already at nine lives. I'm already at nine lives. I don't think it goes any higher. And if it does, it's gonna be a bit sad. Uh, you had to just notice that that is indeed a door. I guess I had a gate on it earlier. So I guess what my optimization I was thinking of, like always having, was uh, getting your um, your bronze medal in a convenient spot that would let you get. Uh, you know, more of the, the ooze when it all respawns back in because, of course, it exits the level. That must have been what I was thinking because I don't think it... I mean, yeah, it must... I mean, it must save your, your bar. I mean, it's on the screen. And it must save the... Do you like how... Do you like how it resets the position before the screen goes away? Hold on, you can see that, right? Yeah, it totally does. What a well-programmed game. Oh, well. Too bad Aster Mouth is still with us, apparently. Um, I don't know if any of the developers are still there. That is not their name, by the way. It's like Artificial Mind... Um, something. That's like what their acronym stands for, but it's... 
Yeah, I, I don't know, man. You look at the, the game library and it's like, man, they they crammed out all the licensed games. And this was like their fourth one. It was a very early company at the time of making this. So who knows? I wonder really what like, what uh, what, what's the process in licensing a game like this? Like, like, is it the developers, you know, make a, a game and then the uh, the publishers are like, yeah, like we'll pitch this, or is it just the the, the publishers, Disney in this case, just go, hey, cheapest bidder, who wants to make a a, a game, and this is what turns up. Uh, I mean, I guess it, it went through some process. I'm just gonna not even say it, man. I'm keeping these videos in. I don't care that Disney's gonna sue the heck out of me, except I do. <laughs> It could let in a child! That was 15 seconds of movie you just witnessed. Like, isn't there like the 10% rule for educational purposes? I know this is not an educational purpose. But like, isn't there the rule where it's like you can show like 10% of something um, to demonstrate like... Well, to, to do a critical like teaching in classes. Um, or it's like 10% of books. I don't know about films. Um, but I know that for films, they just, you know, show us the entire film. It's like, ah, oh, yes, I taught all my students. Ah, oh, the health, health does go to 10. This level keeps going into a couple of other rooms, though, so it's okay. But now I don't need the ooze. And I'm just, I keep getting more health. It's at least something. Like, this game, like, as much as I'll sound like I'm ripping into it, it's at least something. I'm getting so many lives, though. I'm getting so many lives, I don't know how to- where to fit them. And then, uh, yeah, it's like, yeah, I'll give it one. A rooftop bit is neat. Uh, what is that? Wait, wake, wake him go, make him go boom, something, explode toy. Uh, sure. I think if you fall off, you just take like one damage as well, but I don't know where exactly you end up. We'll figure that out maybe later, because there's some more precarious jumping in some of the later levels. Uh, but yeah, I believe there are so many lives. What is going on here? Maybe whoever did the retro achievement set should like extend this with like dumb stuff, like get 99 lives. Because it doesn't look like it takes that long to get it. Also, joy. Joy. They put one just up there. Oh, you, you, you thought I was going to keep going over there. No, man, that's for decoration. That's for decoration. Just platforms. You know, platformer things. Hey! Hey! Just not very happy about that one. How many lives? How many lives is too many lives? I feel like, given the fact that I've been hit like four times, it's probably one. Yeah. But yeah, I, I'm curious, like, what it actually takes to create a game like this. And if anyone, legit, real, real talk, if anyone knows anyone who made this game, I would legitimately love to, like, do an interview or a chat or something. I really want to find, like, some of these people who made, like, these kinds of games. Because, uh, so someone's gonna say, like, for a nostalgic purpose, but it's, like, legitimately, like, it'd be kind of neat to, you know, to really, like, dive into what making a game in the late 2000s, or, well, not late 2000s, in the early 2000s was like, um, it just feels like a, a, a relic, like a time long gone, you know, because licensed video games, they don't really happen anymore. Or they ended up, you know, turning into the mobile, you know, kind of game stuff. Whereas, like, for for a fair bit of time, this was, like, this is a game. It feels a bit cheaper, yeah, but it's a game. It totally is a game. And there's nothing to really, like, get too upset about that. So, back in, by the way. Like, I, I love how you gotta go back in. I'm just playing as Mike the inside time. Stuff it. Mike is the cooler character anyways. I mean... Who wanted to be Sully? Like, really? Sully has, like... <laughs> I can do a psychoanalysis, I was gonna say, he's got 
He's got mummy issues, but nah, that's not it. That's not it at all. They don't really, like, the parents get mentioned in the, in the film, I think. But, I don't know, they're two working class people living with each other. One thing I kind of like about the uh, the film, I guess, is that uh, it's got that environmental message without necessarily being like that ham-fisted. It's, it's pretty pretty okay about it. Um, you can make the argument that it's like no way, like with the um, with the ending of the film, like be a legit like solution in real life. But it's like you know to tell the story. Also, rats taken straight out of the Toy Story 2 game. I swear. They've got the, they've got the conch on the back, the conch, the, the, um, the key, I'm just gonna say. Unfortunately, you don't collect them this time around, you just kinda scare kids and hear your ears, like, bleed. Uh, it has a bit of fixed camera angling on you, but that's okay. I don't really have much to say about these levels as well, because it's like, what do they have to do with Monsters, Inc? It kind of, like, it doesn't quite go to the motions, because it's like, well... I mean, you saw the three worlds. We had, uh... City World... Ice World, and, and Desert World. And, uh... We'll see how far I get. Um... It, it's gonna be a two-stream affair, but yeah. Uh, so why don't I, I talk about, uh, there's me jumping into the water. Uh, so why don't I talk about, um, two games I played this week. Uh, and, uh, I feel like, let's start with the, the slightly weird one. The slightly, uh, like, off-center one. And then go back into a game that kind of will lead me back into this game a bit more, uh, smoothly. Uh, so the one off kill to one I played was called The Hex. This is a, um, an indie game by... I've, I'm terrible with names. It's the guy who made uh, Pony Island, which I have played, and Inscription, which I remember talking about, like, as they showed it, um, at, a E3. That is the scariest part, the twerking, air quotes. <laughs> um, why well, yes, yeah, shaking your butt means twerking. 2022. <laughs> um. We got crushies. We got crushies. I'm so glad I focused about that. Also, are there enough? There's enough juice, there's enough juice. To scare this kid, yet again. I didn't even need to go over to the other side, they put too much ooze in this level. Uh, so yeah, so I played the Hex. Uh, what the Hex is, is- what the heck is the Hex? Uh, the Hex is an indie game, uh, it's a very narrative driven game, and it's basically, uh, a meta game. It's one of those games about games. Uh, how the game is played is it's a, um, a point and was game, point, point and click with was game where you, uh, at least they turn off the, the crushes on the way back, so nice. Unfortunately, they make you walk out, so not as nice, but sure. What, what kind of tips do you give? Don't get crushed. Got it. Why, well, yes, that is an actual staircase. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's a point and click game, uh, with was control keys, and, uh, what it effectively is to the player is that there are six characters, uh, each one has their own, like, backstory of some kind, and, uh, it is your goal as a player to basically play them, uh, and then there's an overarching story where there will be a murder, and, uh, what will happen, uh, probably I will explain in... A handful of minutes because I'm gonna give it away, uh, but um, so here comes the portal again, or the door. It's just the door. This the scene is still going. I'm just interrupting it with a bit of gameplay. I feel like Waternoose just says this purely to raise his wages, like to get like government subsidies. Cause legit, if you make it out like kids are not scary at all, you know, what's the risk? Anyone can do it. 
but if you make it so that only a few elite people <laughs> you know like the trained apple genius bar people it's like ah uh, yes not everyone has the has the gusto to fix an apple product you know like that kind of stuff exists like I mean, like, an Apple product is just a computer like any other one, but... Well, yes, we, we, we make the parts proprietary, so technically, uh, you're not licensed to do it. So, that's a fun dispute, but that's for another time. I love the lighthouse blocking and blinding me. Ah. Uh... Has something gone wrong, like, if the lighthouse is constantly, like, rotating like that? Or is, is that just a regular thing that it does when it's sunset? I don't know if you should do that sunset, so... Oh well. Kid's dead. And, uh... Well, yes. They left one token up there. I wonder as well, like... Because there's one more kid in this level. I'm gonna call them kids. Oh, the single jump is just so awful looking, isn't it? I can't believe it. I'm only like 41 minutes into the stream as well. Oh, it's, it's up another bounce pad. Nope. Who knows? Eh, returns to level later. You don't you don't need the bronze medals, and I know I gotta come back anyway, so. Sorry, you only need the bronze medals. Uh so yeah, so the hex is that kind of game. Uh but what's so interesting about that kind of stuff? Well, what the game is, is it's basically a meta-analysis of uh various kinds of video game genres, as well as also providing some overarching story, uh which is some meta about game dev because there's a lot of there are a lot of indie games about game dev um i think i might i might have mentioned the last one i did play was the beginner's guide which was a game where you played as well rather a guy effectively what, what was it really he liked making maps and then uh no sorry he was exploring the mind of someone who liked making maps for counter-strike um, or he started making maps for Counter-Strike, and then, uh, I don't know, he got very, like, artsy about it. And then, uh, basically he had this narrator who had self-involved himself in the story in some way, and then that was it. That, that was the game. It was a, it was a game purely about, like, this kind of narrative, only to then pretty much just be a lie. Like, it's all fictional, and that's okay, but then it was like, well, what did I learn as a player? Uh, the answer was not really much. I kind of wandered around for an hour and a half, and then, sure, I, ju I found out that whoever this <laughs> narrator guy was, was an absolute jerk, so. Fortunately, this one, it's not that bad. It's, it's, how do I, how do I say it? And someone's gonna, like, be very upset that I don't like, uh, this game as much as they do. Uh, I'll, I'll preface, I'm a very, like, I'm a bit too critical of just, like, these indie games that are strictly around narrative. Um, so... How about let me just describe the game from like the beginning. So you you start in this bar, uh, or is it an inn? I can't recall which one it was exactly. Um, and uh, there are six characters. You start playing as a guy called uh, what was it? It was Super Something. It's not Sonic the Hedgehog. It was a different animal, but we'll just we'll go with I'm going with Sonic the Hedgehog. Because he's basically a 2D platformer. And he, he's like, oh, he's told, go get a key. And he tries to get the key, and he falls down, and then enters a coma for five seconds. But in that five seconds, he relives his glory days, where he was in a platformer, which was, uh, really basic. It was effectively Super Mario Brothers. It had Goombas. It had spike traps. Um, I did not touch the spike traps, and a friend tells me, apparently if you touch the spikes, you just respawn before, and there's a, ske a skeleton on the spike trap, so you can jump across without experiencing the same, uh, death twice. I'm like, okay, neat. Um, that's okay. I also found a secret cat who basically spoiled the plot to me. Just immediately, like, okay. I found her three times, because there were three levels. In each of the levels, uh, it came up with some fake Steam reviews. The game decided to take some profiles off my Steam account, as well as a bunch of people who aren't on my Steam, sorry, aren't my Steam friends, and uh, pretend that they gave this game positive reviews. The only reviews were positive reviews for this game. Then there was a sequel where a guy was like, yo, you gotta make your game tubular, radical, so he wears sunglasses and uh, punches enemies, and then, 
uh, reviews are sometimes negative, and every time there's a negative review, the game was like, oh, this is bad, this is really bad. And then uh, there was a third game, which was... I can't even recall. But the point is, is I kept getting bad. And then eventually... Uh, oh, wait, no, it was broken. It was unfinished. That was the point of it. It was like, oh, this is unfinished. Ooh. And then, uh... Something, 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 he wakes up. I really can't recall. And then the second chapter begins. You play as, uh... A chef guy, and he's like, oh, I'm not a fighter, I'm a chef. And then you find out that he was in a fighting game. I don't know, he was just kind of transferred into it, and there's an evil corporate guy, and you're like, oh, I'm gonna become a fighting guy. And so now you play a fighting game. It was a little bit weird to play on the was keys and the mouse, but effectively you aim with your mouse, and you punch high, medium, or low, and then you do... That kind of stuff. It's pretty basic, but it's got like dodging. It's like, oh, okay. Or, or blocking and some other. No special moves. It's just kind of punch high, medium, low. But sure, okay. You do that a bit. Uh, there's a bit of some neat presentation where it does like a training montage bit without being too jarring. So I thought that was kind of neat. Uh, and then at some point, it goes into a bit of a story mode near the end where you reuse the exact same mechanics to do a cooking game. Except then at the end. Uh, the evil guy comes up and he's like, I'm going to stand close to your grandma. And then you punch your grandma and the scene ends. So I'm like, okay. So this guy... Oh, oh also, uh, this guy hates smelly Smash players. He, he's not a big fan of fighting game players. Um, because it was like, oh... The, the, like, the, the way out was to make the character OP. I don't know why, but sure. Uh, and then uh, people... I hate these enemies as well. Boing. I don't even know what's going on in this level, I swear. I'm pretty sure you just hit all three, right? Like, you, you just do that and they're all like in, in a row. Might as well get these before I... Uh, before I bite, so... Okay, sure. Uh... Maybe it opens up with a specific pattern. Ooh, are you gonna just spoil the pattern for me? Just find the combination! Okay, okay. I'll find it. Legit. Oh, I just had to hit the first one again. Okay, cool. <laughs> cool. Alright. You like how they had the trampoline in all the levels, by the way? I actually wonder if that's like a like a trend that they're gonna do in all the levels, like uh, every single level there's a uh, there's the item, so you just literally cannot 100% the level until um, until you go back after the boss. Bonk. Not bad for a guy with one eye. That is not bad for a guy with one eye. So I think uh, my goal of this stream is let's do the first two worlds, and then uh, this this scene is still going by the way, and there's only twelve levels, so you know that as they've probably just chosen three scenes and broken it up into all these individual bits. There was some, there was a lot of video in the um Bugs Life game, wasn't there? So what are, what next happened in the hex? Then you played a a, a turn-based RPG game. It was kind of basic. Um, yeah, it made a, a bit of a meme where I was like, oh, we can glitch our way through the wall to skip the game. And I was like, no, I'm going the long way. It made you really realize that the mechanics were rather simple, but sure, okay. Um, I can't remember too much about it, actually. I played this yesterday as well. Like, that's, that's the worst part. Is that whatever I played was very recent, and it's kind of escaped my memory, so... Uh, okay, so then chapter four happens. You are now playing a, um, I'm not gonna say XCOM-like game. It's just a, a uh, grid strategy game. I think Fire Emblem is probably the best example. It's like different characters have health, they move around, except you only play with two guys, and they've got the same kind of moves, and then the game is like, here's a cheat engine. Oh, oh, the reason why the RPG was bad was because the villain won in the end. Because you made him win. I don't know. And, and then it was like, oh, people hated the game. Oh. Um, 
something like that. So anyway, the strategy game, you have a cheat engine, uh, and then there's mods, and the mods make the game weird. Like, that, it, canonically, the mods in the game, I don't know. Um, it does like a trippy thing where the main character gets infected with a mod, and then uh, he dreams up a bunch of stuff, and he never truly leaves. The side character he had his whole time was uh, just disappears because he's basically killed or something like that. I don't know. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Also, at the end of uh, the RPG bit, you have a side character, and the side character is like, as punishment, uh, he will be sent to, um, to Galactic Force 2 or something. And then the other one's just like, you're never appearing in the game again, so something like that. Alright, Chapter 5, you play a Space Marine. Space Marine is in a Hotline Miami game, basically. I'm just gonna say it's like that. Um, had some neat bits, like you had to wield a sniper rifle, and then you, like, effectively mouse zoom over to where you wanted to aim to. Um, that was that. Oh, we got another video. This is from the beginning of the, the film, I believe. Oh my gosh. Ah, there he goes. Uh, so yeah, forgetting all four bronzes, by the way. You'll now be able to use the trampolines, so keep an eye out for them. There they are. Bouncy, bouncy. Good luck. Cool. All trampolines, by the way. So wherever there is a trampoline, yeah, you get immediately thrust into a boss battle, which is a secret slide. You must collect seventy-five of the coins and finish the race before Randall to win. But press up to go fast. Um. Mike has a very big hitbox, so don't worry. I'm very certain that there's a bit too many of these coins as well, but let's see how it goes. Where is this in the world? I'm really not too sure. It kind of reminds me of that rooftop bit, but it's also like, is a sleep a secret slide? I don't even know. And then uh, you gotta run. You could take the trampoline, but I'm not. Because I'm just that rebellious, apparently. Uh, so yeah, the Space Marine bit. And then, uh, what happens is that the Space Marine guy, uh, the, the weird lawyer who sent him to weird place and also sent the fighting game guy to the fighting game. Uh, he's basically like there in the inn, in the bar, and the Space Marine guy just shoots him and then the bartender is like, did you like the ending? And I said yes, and then the game quit out. So I like to think that that is how the game actually ends. Now obviously, there's a bit more. That- oh my gosh. I hope you saw that as well. I swear, I hit X. Someone can judge me on that one. I did- I didn't see it. I didn't- it felt- I felt it. I don't know. <laughs> maybe I- maybe I- <laughs> the X button was hit as hard as uh, Chris Rock was. Ooh, topical. Ooh. <laughs> that happened literally today. That was good fun. I got no thoughts on that, man. <laughs> I just see it, I'm like, I... You know? This is a wild scenario. <laughs> All I know is that they were both in back-to-back -back DreamWorks films. So, you know, if you got bad beef, like, you know, I can understand. Uh... So yeah, so obviously if you reply, no, I hated the ending, then the game goes, okay, cool, because there's actually a little more. There was a sixth character. The sixth character, this is where it all ties together. So the sixth character is an invisible guy, but he's actually, uh, well, not invisible. He, they make a joke that he looks like a, the, un, the locked character on the character select screen in fighting games. Not bad for a guy with one eye. Okay, see you. Um... But really what he is, is that he's a pair of hands and legs uh, because he's in a first person game. It's not even a shooter, it's a walking sim. And actually what this is, is the sixth game in a list of games uh, called Walk. And it makes you realize that actually all of, all of these games that you have been kind of mock playing this entire time, 
have all been the f works of a fictional game dev who effectively made all the wrong choices. Is my right stick apparently not centered? Is that why that's not disappearing? Okay, weird. I gotta adjust the dead zone on that because that ain't disappearing and that's gonna be kind of weird. There it goes. Good luck. And remember, you can always return to the courses in the urban training ground to improve your completion level. And there he goes. Mike is at an oar. Maybe I'll play a Sully just to just to show off. Maybe. It's me touching my stick, it moves ever so slightly. Okay, so another four levels. They all start with the I know, right? It's great. Oh my gosh, Mike, you're not allowed to touch there. You are not allowed to touch there. You can tell this level is pretty fancy. And actually, the, these desert levels get a little larger. I, I will say that, like, they do properly start small and get a bit larger from there. By the way, do you love how the, uh, the oozes from a distance are actually, like, two sprites crossing over each other? Like trees are in a lot of, like, older games. Uh, I want to... So like if if you're looking from overhead, you can really tell. It's it's not the easiest to tell like from this angle, but I swear like that is some like weird LED swapping. So I've got the uh I've got the trampolines now. So but you saw some of it in action. Um. So yeah, so you play a walking sim for a bit, and the walking sim ends up in effectively what I remember as Pony Island's gameplay, where you drag nodes around, and uh, in this case you've also got to do a little mini game where you solve the nodes. So it actually ends up being a puzzle game section, uh, contextualized as a walking sim, and actually exactly like the uh, beginner's guide I mentioned earlier, where there's, um, what is going on? What is actually going on? It's... I have no idea why it's lagging the heck out, because I've raised the priority on this one. Maybe my computer is actually dying. I wouldn't be surprised. I, I, I was I was smack talking Windows 11 earlier, and it's come to bite me. I don't even use Windows 11 as well. Oh, uh, well. Uh, what is that? It looks cute. You can just kick it. And then I assume you gotta ground pound it. Yeah. Everything's a robot. Because of course it is. What does fighting any of this have to do with any of this? Like, re really? There you go. You can get cancelled out of a... Out of a scream. So I guess it's that. Oh my gosh, there he goes. Uh... But yeah, yeah, it basically ended with that, and then... Uh, pretty much, I said it was like... The Beginner's Guide, because literally, it's the supposed narrator of all the games that you played, narrating how much of a failure he is, uh, it basically explaining that the bugs were created because he had co-worker who was not good at programming, apparently. Uh, there are some weird plot holes, I feel like, uh, in this, and I'm kind of like, what? So, the character you play in the third game, the RPG, came out of the fighting game. She also wanted to get out of the fighting game. Uh, in this section, they describe it. I love how this slope is so strong that jumping over pushes you back. Cool. Um, in, in, the, in the walking sim bit, they describe it as like, oh, this is the, the character that this one person who introduced the bugs, this is the one character that they really enjoyed. Uh, and so they were like, fine, you get to be in the, in the RPG. Um, but, uh, they didn't really make it clear, like, because in the, in the, in the game chapter earlier, she was, like, trying to be too OP so that she could leave, and then she ended up in another game, and I, I wasn't really quite sure why that was the case. It just kind of happened. Um, so I'm like, okay. Also, I guess the other guy got moved into another game, and his name never really got mentioned as well. It, it kind of just happens. So I'm like, okay, uh, ultimately, by the end of the game, can I spoil the game? I guess I can just spoil the game. Ultimately, by the end of the game, also, you can tell where this is going. Yep. So, alas, there is more of the level that is yet to be seen, but... That's right. Oh, wait, you've got to find the panel. So what was that? Gucci and Lightning Bolt. 
Look at that, it's an actual gameplay mechanic. 25 lives later. <laughs> At least they kind of line up with where they were, though. So, they're nice enough there. Gucci. Wow, that's some, that's some, uh, foreshortening right there. And a lightning bolt. That must have been up here, I think. Uh, that was a pro gamer move right there. Um, so yeah, ultimately, by the end, uh... It does, like, a whole weird thing. I'm really not too sure even what happened at the end. You're doing like a puzzle. Oh, it cuts in. I don't even know, man. It cuts in with a weird bit. Where I was doing like a barkeeping mini game, like like an unseen game that the guy supposedly made, and then uh, it's basically oh, like there was a seventh character or something. The kid just got spat out of his mouth. Um, and then uh, ultimately by the end. Uh, yeah, you seal away, I don't know, you, you, you commit to the hex and you seal away the developer by having someone reach through his monitor and choking him. Sun, Scarab, Wave. Uh, that's the end of the game. It's probably got more, more to it, but it kind of, my biggest issue is that I'm, I'm very... Uh, I'm a very, like, mechanics kind of guy. I played this game, and I'm like, well, yeah, the mechanics, like, they're there, I can see its influences, but none of them are really that fleshed out, and a lot of them, like, really want you to get going. So, like, the, the, uh, the, the strategy game one, it's like, oh, and it introduces cheats, and I know that the cheats are part of the design, but I ended up doing the same cheat method of move, infinite range, infinite damage. Like, you, you just hop from one onto the other. They, they've got the gameplay mechanic of... I've got to hit the sun, don't I? Is this the sun? Oh, the wave. Sorry. The wave. Spit out another kid at me. The nice thing is that I guess I don't have to do this again, so... Uh, but... Yeah, it... It, it, it was a toughie for me. Uh, because, yeah, none of these... Bits were really that, um, I guess, that engaging for me. I kind of played through because it kind of played itself. Fire, Gucci, star, balls. Fire, Gucci, star, balls. So that's, that's, that's not star as well, that's star, moon. Fire, Gucci, star, moon, balls. 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 Nope. Nope. Well, there's the Gucci, so we'll go with that. Fire, Gucci, Star Moon, Balls. I guess the order is important, so fire first. At least it's nice enough and it prompts you of it again. Uh, cool, cool. There you go. There's lightning a bolt. Uh. This looks like fire. Okay. Back to the Gucci. Uh, yeah. At the very least, hey, it's a it's a fair bit of stuff. Oh, I got soft locked a couple of times. That didn't help me. Like I literally got to a point, and then the uh, like the, there's a bit where when you're the fourth guy, and there's like the hologram people, and uh, like guiding you the way, and what you have to do is like block, like multiple of the holograms with objects and then use your mouse for the last one. Uh, there was one point where it decided to not, like, it, it, one of the vases got stuck. And, uh, this was the first one as well. So one of the vases got stuck and I couldn't continue on because it wasn't, uh, activating the lock. Or it wasn't, it wasn't blocking the lock. Um, so it ended up, uh, not continuing. And because that was the first usage of that mechanic, I ended up not knowing, like, really whether it had gone wrong or whether I was missing something, and I wandered around for a fair bit of time before it just kind of didn't... You like how it's cut out? Um, before it really... Or before I was just like, ah, oh, just quit, come back, and then, would you know, it suddenly started working. And I was like, oh, okay. 
Um, and then the worst part, when I said like, oh, mechanics that get underused, literally the next screen is the last of the puzzles. Yeah, that's my right stick being slightly off-centered. Weird. It legitimately is off-center. Weird. Oh, that's gonna be fun. Someone's gonna get irritated, my right stick constantly showing up. Oh well. Uh, Mike, stop touching there. Okay. <laughs> Uh, music's alright, presentation's alright, story is alright, value's alright, it's just the gameplay itself, like, I feel like I want more out of it, and like, that's my problem, is that like, by the end of this, I remember like, roughly what it is, but yeah, like, I don't know, kinda, I kinda miss out on it, so, yeah, yeah. But, that's all I can say. So, why don't I bring up another game? The other game I played in the week was a game uh, called Shadow Man. I think I might have mentioned Shadow Man, maybe being on like a like a game I would like to play list. Um, so I actually played it. What I didn't realize is that Shadow Man is a game that is developed and... or oh, it's not by Iguana. But Iguana, like the guys who made Turok for reference. Um, but I think they changed their name. So I don't know if this is the same Iguana team or whether it's like a separate Iguana team, but it's someone very, very close to them. And it kind of has a little bit of that feeling of a uh, Turok, these large kind of unrelenting maze-like levels. Um, but what Shadow Man is, basically, if I had to describe it, it's a, uh, it's Tomb Raider 1 mixed with Mario 64. Uh, so it's a collectathon in various levels, uh, and uh, what you're collecting is, and I swear, this is hilarious, you're collecting Dark Souls. Capitalize as well, even better. Uh, this is right after I played Dark Souls, so this was, was hilarious to me. Um, you like whatever's going on here? I don't know. Yeah, guess what's the, uh, item of the, the world as well. Also, I hate, I hate that skip in the music. It's like, it's a one minute loop. And it just, it doesn't fade in quite right, so. Uh, so I played the, uh, 2021 Night Dive remaster of the game. Uh, and interestingly as well, and I, I'd like to mention this as well. I probably would like to play this game on stream at some point. Particularly the remaster. Uh, but I, one, I just came out of playing Quake, like, two streams ago. And that was another Night Dive remaster, so we can cool it for a bit. And two, uh, they... They patched the game a couple of times since its release, particularly uh, there was a one point, a version 1.4 patch that came out in January, which moved around some things and added a couple of, like, bonuses. And I'm like, well, maybe I'll play the game when it's done, when it's, like, fully finished, which is, it was a great fun time, and it's weird, like, hearing a 1999 game and going like, mm, it's not done yet, but I think for, like, a one time, like, I'm gonna be playing one, you know, the game once, on stream. I better play it when it's, uh, probably done. That's some level design. This is another door opens up and I can't get to it because it's down some boosts. Yeah, it probably is. I mean, there's a boost right there. You can smell it. A mile away. And there he goes. Back under the covers. Did the camera just clip outside the level and I just saw like the rest of the level was like just in that direction? I mean it's quite clear there's like oh, no loading screen so the level must be elsewhere in the, the large map but... Yeah, uh, UFO, everyone loves them. You just turn them off. And then fail to jump on them, cool. Uh, and that guy is not accessible, and there's stuff over there, which I could have gotten, but I didn't. So, okay. I think I'm on the other side of the... of the bit, though. Yeah, I am. How many thingies have I gotten? One! I mean, you gotta get five of the kids. So it's not like, uh... It's not like I'm not navigating to find them, but... Uh, but yeah, no, Shadow Man was a very, very interesting game. I actually really did enjoy it. And you can't even climb the trees, so... I think this is actually your, your way over. It's a bit of an odd jump, but, you know, I'll accept it. Oh, I just realized, yeah, you gotta deal with the... the trees. 
Also, I guess what is going on here? This is another Simon Says. This one's a bit easier, I guess. Out comes the kid. There he goes. And he's off. Okay, cool. So, um, so yeah, so Shadow Man, how do I describe it? Uh, like, beyond that, uh, you basically have... You play it as a third-person shooter. You have a right-hand and a left-hand weapon, but my right-hand weapon for most of the game was uh, this pistol, the salt pistol. You charge it up and uh, fire it, and it shoots a little blast. As you gain more of the Dark Souls in the game, which are basically like um, Power Stars, effectively, uh, that bar actually goes up. You get to deal more damage with that bar. You also get uh, more of the ammo, effectively. Um, the ammo for all the secondary weapons, uh, which are kind of neat. There's quite a few like different kinds of uh, weapons. Um, and it's kind of nice just finding them along through the game. Uh, so there's that. Um, and then also on top of that, the Dark Souls having more and upgrading your bar also means you can open doors that have that bar. Um, so if some of the doors are, um, you know, say they take like five of the thing and you have a level five bar, you can open up that door. Okay, the red lily pad gets no love apparently. At least it's not red. It's red. <laughs> How do I get him out? Cause I'm thinking like, where's... Am I even a- I- by the way, I love that I'm able to like jump that. That's some brilliant level design if I'm able to just jump that. Unfortunately, I don't think I can climb the rest of the ledge, but sure. Um... Yeah, yeah, so, so, there's that, um, there's no direct keys, so at least, you know, the maze hunting is purely, like, surface level, and, uh, you've got those doors, but the doors aren't really everywhere, and generally, you know, you find more souls, you unlock more areas, uh, but you kind of have to, you do have to remember which areas have the doors, most of them are in the, uh, the, the starting, kind of, what is it, the, the walks, the path of, of chaos or something like that. There's a there's one kind of common hub level that it does link most of the other levels. Um, but in quite a number of the levels, there's also a door inside it. I've now destroyed my opportunity of knowing which way is down. Uh, inside a lot of the levels are more doors. And in the more doors, there are items. And the items are used to actually unlock some secrets. And the secrets might involve more Dark Souls. So you're actually encouraged to go back and find these items because not only are they like weapons that you can use but it's like one of them is like a hammer and it shoots down fire but it also hits pedestals and another one is like it burns down uh like cloth um walls or something like that uh and another one is uh like uh you stick it in a pedestal and you can activate it and warp to somewhere else in the level and there's so many like of these items it's really neat um Ultimately, as well, you'll find these items called the, uh, I'm gonna, it was, pff, start with an R, I'm gonna call them the rib cages. there was some other name of them, um, and, uh, what they let you do was, uh, the whole point of the game is that, uh, some, some guy is tr basically revitalizing five serial killers, uh, and uh, you use one of these items to go into the level of the serial killer, and you basically go in and 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 fight them as a boss battle, uh, which is uh, yeah, it, it's kind of neat as well because like it's a bit weird because all that kind of happens near the end of the game because you've also got to collect some items to become the Shadow Man in the real world, which is what you're doing there. Uh, so the point is, is that it's a lot of mechanics, but it all blends into itself very seamlessly and it comes across very organically as well like i found i only really looked up a guide to like understand what the item was it, it did not explain and it kind of irks me that it didn't really explain what that uh what those ribcage items were but once i understood that that was okay um i did get kind of stuck at times when i wasn't really aware of like how the map design worked and then also like 
what items were still available or to get. Um, there is a running counter of how many docks. I killed the kid. I killed the kid. All right, the, the, the child will come back to me. I got him. Easy. Um, there is a running counter of how many of the Dark Souls you've gotten in each level, and uh, I played I played a significant part of the N64 game as well, just to just to be aware of like what does the uh, remaster do that the N64 version didn't. Um, it also tells you you pick up these little two things called kiddos, and uh, they're they're only there just so that when you get a hundred of them, you can redeem them in this one place uh, to get um, uh, extra life, like to a uh, health increase. Um, but it was, it was kind of neat and very, like, neat how that works, and, uh, so, for reference, those kiddos as well, um, yeah, the remaster counts them in each level, the N64 version, like, you don't get a run encounter of how many you've gotten, um, I believe there are more in the remaster as well, so that makes it a little bit more forgiving to get max health, um, so that's alright, uh, but... Yeah, like, it was just this really organic game of me trying to figure out the mechanics, uh, finding more souls, exploring new areas. It was constantly full of exploration. Um, and it was a real blast to play. I really did enjoy it. I, I even went and I was like, yo, I'm gonna play it again. I'm gonna get that one achievement for, uh, you know, for, for, uh, beating the entire game without dying, which kind of involved quick save scumming. Um. On, on the N64, you don't get to quick save, but I'm also like, well, when you die, you go back to basically the warp point of the level, but the levels aren't that massive. Like, there's not too much platforming in the way. And also, none of the enemies respawn until you leave the level and come back. So, uh, it's actually a bit forgiving in that regard. Um, so it's actually not too bad to play on the original console. So, look at that. I actually died for once because fighting the enemies is really jank. And then I got another life, so it didn't... Okay, I, I was like, why did it not show me my lies for a moment, but, okay. This is a weird level as well. A number of these levels get a bit weird. We gotta have a puzzle level, at least. Like, that's that's the, the gist. Look at this kid just sitting there. It's weird having to find five of these guys, because you've effectively got to navigate most of the level. Um, you know, because there's always the item of the level. Just... Hiding one of the, one of the, the kids. So, uh, very bizarre, but, uh, yeah. So, I, I feel like Shadow Man is actually a rather understated, um, like, collect-a-thon game of its time. What it definitely is, it's a little bit dated. It's got, um, oh, okay, okay, we're, we're ignoring him, we're ignoring him. Oh, but I can't ignore him, can I? Or can I? If I go quick. He won't get me. All good. All good. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a real nice collectathon. Uh, I guess the enemies were a little uninspired. I guess there was that. Like, I mean, th there's definitely enemies, but I found it was a. Uh... Oh boy, this is slow. Um, I kind of didn't like how you'd hit the enemies with the pistol and then like. They'd have to, um, be hit, like, one last time, but, oh, yeah, you can eat them. Maybe I should be eating them instead. Um. Circle? Triangle? Right bracket? Okay, maybe, maybe it's just not throwing it instead. Oh, and it's also got a symbol on it, so this is the star symbol. It's gonna go on the star one. There we go, and this one's the sun one, and it goes on the sun. Hey, at least it's a different level kind of idea. Only thing is, uh, this is level 7 out of 12. Like, you've already seen half the game. Uh, you're going to see 100%ing the rest of the game on the next stream. That's why I'm kind of going, yeah, this is this is definitely going to be a shorter game, but that's okay. Um, it's a little bit too long for one stream, though. That's the only problem. Uh... But yeah, it was, uh, it's, it's really good fun. I really did enjoy it. Um, but I guess here's one thing as well. So the Night Dive remaster actually adds in a significant amount of cut content. And I want to describe one of the scenarios that I came across as someone who's never played the game before. So, uh, there's a level called the, um, 
called uh, the Gateway. This is actually, it's it's one of the earlier levels you get into. I think you need to be level 3 on the soul thing, which means you need like 4 Dark Souls uh, to get to it. Or 2 or something like that. Um, and uh, you get into it, and some at some point in the level you come across a train. The train has two levers on it. One labeled 2, one labeled 3. Uh, I, w I clicked the 2 first. This led me to a place called the... Um, I forgot what it was. I had two in the name. Uh, explored around it. I couldn't really figure out where to go afterwards. So I went back to the train and I went to a place called three. This led to another level which had a train in the level. A secondary train or a secondary like little carriage. And that secondary carriage uh, led me to a level called the Cathedral of Pain. The Cathedral of Pain included five corpses. Um, effectively, the five corpses were actually... Was it that level? That wasn't full damage, right? That was just me, me really dropping down hard on this guy. I hope they didn't put a ledge, like... The camera controls are, are blocked on this level, apparently. Maybe they didn't actually texture the walls. Uh, and then to my right, sick, having a fun time again. Yep. Uh... Oh, kid! I'm gonna get him. Uh... But... Yeah, so it wandered into a different level, the Cathedral of Pain, which has the corpses, which I mentioned earlier, like you use the ribcage things on them, but I didn't know that at the time. There's also another level called the uh, the Engine Room, uh, which I navigated to at some point, um, and all I could do in it was there was a point where there were like pistons crashing down, and there were three like bars where I could fill it with uh, each bar with five levels of Kool-Aid. I didn't really know what to do with that, so I looked it up. And you set the Kool-Aid to the top, for all five. For all three, sorry. So you do that, and then it shuts the piston off. And so you can jump across at the bottom, but you can't jump across the rest, because you can't navigate to wherever the other control panels are. Or, in my case, I had no idea. It, it really wasn't clear. Uh, the game also, by the way, comes with the original strategy guide that came out at the time. A very large PDF, uh, and it describes how to play the game when it came out, and not necessarily the remaster. So, to that, I want to now make clear what exactly I witnessed, which was the level, well, first of all, the train in the gateway with the two and the three on it. Well, in the original version, it only went to one place, and that place was the Cathedral Pain. Actually, I think it went to another level, uh, and then led to the Cathedral Pain. And uh, that, that would have been what three goes to, so they didn't change that. Um, but the level that I went to when I went, when I press 2, is a brand new level that was entirely cut from the game, and uh, only exists in the 3 Master as like, oh, this is cut content that was uh, re-added back in. I don't, I didn't know what was the cut content and what was re-added back in, so all that meant to me was a little bit of an extra kind of complication, is that this this area was more complex, and that was actually the general theme, this is, these jumps are absolutely horrendous by the way. Um, that was the general theme of what I was experiencing with some of this game, was that some of the levels were actually expanded, and I couldn't tell from the N64 version. Uh, sorry, I couldn't I couldn't tell uh, what it was or that they were expanded until I played the N64 version, and I really kind of realized what was going on there. Um, all right, so cool. Uh, I couldn't really tell, you know, that what was added in as part of the remaster and what was original, really. Um, and to some degree, I feel like there is some original, like, I guess, idea of what they wanted the game to be uh, cut out really obviously. Uh, so I mentioned that there's the five serial killer levels. Well, in the original, there were only three, and they bundled three of the serial killers right into one of the levels. Um... In this version, they have restored all five, and it's a little bit, uh, or, or they restored the two that they cut out. And it's a bit clear which ones they were, because they're awfully large and expansive levels. So it seems quite clear that maybe it's like, maybe it was a performance thing. Well, actually, I don't even know, because it does proper, like, sectioning off the levels. Um, to, like, save on, on, a uh, bandwidth? Bandwidth? Save on the processing power, the blast processing. Um... So, uh, but yeah, like, the extra levels are fine, and they actually fit in, like, pretty nice, nicely for the most part, though. 
Um, so I didn't actually mind it, but it definitely was like a, a, you know, the game was longer and the game felt larger. But was it necessarily... Oh, he just, he just gets naked out after two hits. Okay. Um, yeah, did it make it a better experience on a first time playthrough? And I guess this is an interesting thing, I guess. With a remaster, when a remaster changes the game in a decently significant way, and in this case, like, the, I love how I jumped, I landed on something. Um, or didn't lose health as well. I had two hits before and I now have two hits. So, okay. And that was purely for a kid, so I'm pretty sure the last two are just somewhere. Listen, none of these levels are, like, really that long. There's a bit going on with this level, you had a little bit of puzzling, but... I mean, it's two screens. You can see it all in, in, in one go, so... There's that there, and... I don't know, we'll continue on from there, but yeah, it was a bit weird. I will say one thing I absolutely loved about this game. One, I, I it's another one of the Samuel Villarreal ma magical games. He does he does wonderful stuff, uh, and and granted, it's, he's not even the only one um, working on those. Uh, but I will say I absolutely love that they got the original composer to one finish up his other tracks. That might have been, you know, left out, like, baited. Uh, but also, really remaster the other tracks and re, like, you know, edit, not re-edit? I'm gonna say just remaster as, on, like, an audio term. So, they're all in flat quality. They're all, like, 700 and, or 800 kilobits per second. Um, and uh, one thing I was really amazed about is a lot of the levels didn't have repeating music. As in, like, they had their own original music track ideas. Um, and, uh, bonus points, some of the music tracks went on for like 10 to 15 minutes. Oh, I forgot this level. Okay, so what this level is, is you go in the door, and you end up in whatever, like, side of the pyramid you were facing on the, on the, the base there. Which means I'm going to encounter, like, some red dudes when I haven't wandered through that point in the level. Uh, but, that's fine. Kind of simple level to understand, though, otherwise. But it does mean that you kind of have to keep going back out and just kind of remembering some stuff. So I've started with the snake. You can tell us this... He's gone. He's out of there. You do take the hit. Cool. Glad to note. I've been scratching my nose, like, all stream. This is very weird. Um... But yeah, it's, uh... What else? What else? What else? They're like... Uh, I definitely say the controls are a bit nicer on uh, this remaster compared to the original N64 version, but they balance it out by kind of chucking more enemies at you and also tweaking some of the damage uh, of all the weapons. Um, which I feel like is an interesting thing. It's like, yeah, it is a PC game. I did play on controller the whole way through. So, uh, but the auto-aim is so incredibly generous. It's, like, horrendously, like... You know, if you if you see it, you'll be like, oh my gosh, like... You just aim so far away and it still navigates to the target. Wow. Cool. Ow. Ow. Okay. You can, you can feel me struggling so hard on the jumping in this game. I will say the jumping was nice in Shadow Man. That's the Tomb Raider vibe. And actually, uh, fun fact, I looked in the, uh, in the strategy guide. They do an interview with two of the game designers. And they both worked at Core Design. Uh, which is like, yeah, okay, yeah, no. They, they 100% worked on the original Tomb Raiders. Um, so this game came out in 19... Uh, not this game, the Monsters NK, but the Shadow Man. It came out in 1999, which meant it would have been after Tomb Raider 3. I'm not too sure if they worked on Tomb Raider 3. Game t uh, development cycles back then could have been a bit quick. Like, there were a lot of... There was a good number of uh, trilogy franchises that were just made really quickly um, at the time. Uh, not enough ooze. Ooh. The eye that knows all. Uh, yeah, no. I definitely recommend it. It was part of... um. Uh, Humble Bundle a little bit ago, uh, but I did I do own the original. I'm sad that the original is not there though 
because uh, it is a different game. I'm also sad the original doesn't come with the remaster. Because um, I remember, like, uh, maybe not Turok, but, uh, like, Quake comes with the, uh, the DOS version. If you do want to boot up the DOS version, I feel like, mmm, it'd be nice. Uh, someone actually reminded me as well that, um, was it the Legacy of Cain Soul Reaver? Uh, used to be on Steam, uh, and GOG, and they took it off, citing a technical reason? This was a year ago that the game was taken off sale. Um, and it's only that game. The other ones in the franchise are all still there. Um, but just that one. Which is weird, because I downloaded it, booted it up, it ran fine, the Steam version. Uh, so, is there even enough of the, of the juice? Like, you obviously can't get that. Like, am I just going to rely on... On the respawning juice. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, no, otherwise, I was really happy about it. It was a long game as well. I, I spent, like, 15, 16 hours on a first playthrough. Like, it was a real... Uh, that was, granted, to get everything, like, after... Although I realized that I actually, like, had acquired most of the stuff. Is there a dude just lying on there? Nope, that is not a dude. Alright, back in the fray. So that was a red dude down there, wasn't it? So, alas. There are two red dudes in this level. Maybe more. Uh, but yeah, no. I definitely would, re would recommend it. Um, and actually, as well, on top of that, like, I'd recommend playing it and experiencing it and kind of going a bit blind um like I, I might have explained a few things but one thing i really liked in the game was how like labyrinthian the levels were but like right when you were doing your last rounds of collecting did it all start making sense which is a very bizarre feeling like it's one i don't get too much where like you know a game is on that border of being complex it's not complex enough that you can't discover things, except for this one, um, and this, uh, this I blame this one on the remaster. In the, um, Scrapyard, uh, remaster level, uh, there is a fake wall that is the intended way to continue the level. There are no other fake walls in the entire game, um, and, uh, you just have to know that there was a blood trail leading that way, and that it would be a fake wall. That was a, that was a toughie. It didn't, it, that one was like a bit uncalled for. And it's in the remaster as well, it's not even in the original version. So, this is, there actually are a number of things that the remaster does that just, yeah, they do confuse me. Um, but, yeah, no, otherwise, very good. So, would recommend, 10 out of 10, not 10 out of 10, but it's, it's definitely like an 8 out of 10. Um, maybe not 8 out of 10 as well. I don't know, because the game was received like pretty alright at the time. The soundtrack is great though. The soundtrack has held up. In in like full flat quality, it's great. Actually, another thing I'll just say I'm surprised about how faithful the game feels on the N64. Like, um I would always imagine I think the game got a Dreamcast release, and that is like the definitive console release. Uh, but the PC version is also like, well, it's the PC version. Um I feel like going around and just getting like this few last guys as well. Um But yeah, no. Definitely. Very, very good game. Really enjoyed it. So, uh, I had a, a mild topic on, a uh, game pricing. Um, I can't think of what the recent example was. I don't even recall anything, but, uh, but that, that was just, like, a topic I had in my head of, like, something I could have done, but, nah, it's all fine. Uh, yeah, other than that. It's been a pretty chill week. Uh, great F1 race today. I would highly recommend uh, give it another watch if you haven't. Um, <laughs> Shilling for the F1, but legit, I don't know. The, the two races so far, they've been a bit gripping. They've been fairly exciting, which is great. Not like a clean sweep kind of race. It's like, hey, you know, people are battling it out. The racing is closer. The unfortunate uh, crash Mick Schumacher had the other day in the qualifying. Uh, but glad glad he's all right so that's that's the best part um but yeah like there's a oh, down i go oh. 
Very down I go. I swear, I swear. Someone, someone know. Am I jumping right? I've got to sort out the dead zone though, because that actually is horrendous. But like, legitimately, uh, my stick is like slightly angled. So like, that's not even like the, the sense of being bad. Also, like the uh, lack of, um, of uh, involves of iframes as the fighting game crowd likes referring to it. Give him a spook! Yeah. And then other than that, yeah, I've... It's pretty chill. It's the end of the month. It's actually, I, sh I should note, the, the changing of seasons. Um, so yeah, so uh, last, last week was the Equinox. Today is basically the last stream of April. Uh, I don't have an April Fool's joke or anything. Uh, my April Fool's joke is I'm playing a very mediocre game where I've played eight of the 12 levels in an hour and a half of stream. Um, oh, sorry, nine of the 13. That was a tutorial level. Let's not forget the tutorial level instead. Um, I, <laughs> I can guarantee, I can guarantee this is 100% going to get the, the joys of the copyright claims on YouTube and that's okay. Ich. Yeah, no, you're not allowed to sneeze at people anymore. Nice it's work, criminal. Something right irks me that this N isn't even in the center of frame. Use them it's like a little bit off. Boost pads. Everyone loves boost pads. Dun, 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 dun. I will say, if they did one thing alright, they did these in-engine cutscenes. Pretty okay. The only issue is there's so few of them. Um, so, you must collect a hundred of the things before Randall gets to the end. Love the waterfalls being outside the LOD distance. And they're still, they're still there. There they go, they rendered the rest of it. I think the last one is a little stingy on how many uh, things there are. I just bumped him out of the way. He's got no idea where he's going. Or he's probably going for a bounce pad on the other side or something. I don't know where he's gone. Maybe I did just, like, unpath him. Great game. Isn't it kind of weird? Like, a number of these games have slide levels. It's kind of strange. I don't know, just like, just these uh, collectathon style games. Did Shadow Man have a slide stage? Almost. Not quite, but. <laughs> Did the Hex have a slide stage? No. No, it didn't. Alas, it missed out on the 3D platformer craze. I'm not really too sure what his actual, like, uh, goal with that game actually even was, as well. Maybe it's just a comment on a fighting game player as being too needy? I don't know. Like, they generally- I, Wow, that's a real judgmental statement, but like, there's a- You know what I mean? It's like, there's a lot of like that pro-tier fighting game crowd, where it's just like, man, you know, there's a changing meta, and it's kind of like, do the devs just keep responding, or do they just let it like sit off? Uh, actually, that was a fun conversation I think I saw on like, what counts a game as dead? Because, like, a lot of people use the player count straight up as, like, a number. Saying, this game has, like, 90% of its player count gone after the first week. It's dead. And I kind of look at it and I go, well, you know, if it's, like, uh, a game where it only takes two people to play, that's not a problem. Or if it's a single-player game, that's really not a problem. It's, it's very easy for that to happen. Whereas, like, if it's, you know, an MMO and there's only 100 active players, it can definitely feel very small. Uh, if it's Battlefield, it's like, well... The 128 player maps, I need 128 people playing in my country at that point in time to even get the benefit of that. And also, you know, if the, you know, if the server is not playing the certain maps I like. A lot of promise, boys, but it takes more than that to mm. become a top scare team. The Arctic training grounds lie beyond this gate, along with some of the hardest challenges you face on the island. Oh. Keep at it. I'll 
see you at graduation. Do you like that sun, by the way? It's just a little circle blot right there. Very wonderful sun. It's not even part of the same map. I gotta load in. So, with that, I'm gonna call that a stream. I have 30 lives. Uh, it's gotta read both memory cards. And, and then it's gotta read it again. So, that's great. So, I've got 8 of the 12 levels done. And then, uh, in the next stream, I'll finish those remaining levels. And then we basically get the last goodies. There's a couple of things still left to see in the other level, so it's not just like me going around getting the last remaining goodies. There's a couple of bits that are actually like walled off. But yeah, other than that, that's uh, that's basically half the game. So, anyways, with that, I would like to thank you so very, very, very much for watching. If you did enjoy this, you can follow on I, there's my <laughs> that's my overlay. You can follow on Twitch or subscribe on YouTube or follow on YouTube or maybe don't subscribe on Twitch because I haven't set that up. That's okay. Uh, and if you miss parts of the stream, you can always watch the VOD on YouTube, so that's all right. Uh, did I really rush through that really quickly? I think I did. So I'll be playing this next week, and then that's it. It's not going to be a long game. Um, and uh, yeah, other than that, I hope you all are keeping on fine, staying safe, uh, staying safe with the seasons, because uh, Daylight Savings kicks in. Oh yeah, Daylight Savings kicks in. So for us in Australia, uh, we're on plus 11 time. After next week, uh, we're on plus 10, which means our clocks go back an hour, which means the stream will be an hour later for you, unless you're also in Australia, in which case it will seem like it's the same time. Actually, if you're in Queensland, Australia, you never were on plus 11. What craziness is that? Abolish daylight savings, man. My sleep schedule keeps getting messed. I swear. I'll never sleep anymore.